G'day everyone, Mr. James Dundon here, and today we're continuing on with DNA, but we're going to look at genes and chromosomes. So we already know that DNA is this double helix that consists of this sugar phosphate backbone, but also has these nitrogenous bases um, that join the runs together. And these bases can be arginine, guanine, cyanine, cytosine, and thymine, and together they make up the code, and this code is specific to every single living organism. And it's really, 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 really long. So long that it's, you know, it could be a billion bases or more in, in distance. So in prokaryotic cells, this DNA is not quite that long, and it's just one circular piece of DNA. However, in eukaryotic cells, this DNA, this eukaryotic cell in, sorry, this DNA in eukaryotic cells is quite long, but it gets broken up into bite-sized pieces. And hopefully you can see those on the screen. So our long piece of DNA is actually broken up into 23 chunks. And each of those chunks is called a chromosome. So I've just done a sample here and we've got six. Okay. If we look at one of those chunks, one of those chromosomes in detail, you see that it has specific sections called genes. And each of those small sections has a specific DNA sequence, and it codes for something unique. If we look at this diagram here, you can see that we've got this section here on this chromosome, and if there's a mutation in that particular gene, it causes this um, Menx syndrome. So most of these genes are actually described by when there's mutations in them, and we get some kind of error. But a gene is just a small section of that chromosome that has a specific sequence that codes for a specific protein. Now, in humans, all of those genes are basically identical. Okay, so we've got 23 chromosomes. On chromosome one, we're gonna have a set of genes. On chromosome two, we're gonna have a set of genes. And chromosome three, we're gonna have a set, and that's gonna be the same for every single human being. They're gonna have those same genes on those, in those same locations on those same chromosomes. And so if we look at another one down here, we've got this HEMA gene, which if it's mutated, is responsible, responsible for hemophilia. So you might be asking, so hang on, I thought we had 46 chromosomes. Well, we do. So our length of DNA is cut up into 23 pieces, but we have two copies, one from our mum and one from our dad. So when they combine, we get those um, full set of 46 chromosomes. But again, so what that would mean if we look here is we would have another version of this chromosome and the other chromosome would have in the same spot the same gene but it might be slightly different. It might have some slightly different bases, which might mean it gives a slightly different phenotype. And those sort of combination between the chromosomes will cause all your physical appearances. So we call those physical appearances your phenotype, but the combinations of chromosomes that you got from mum and dad, your genotype. Now in a population of people, there might be multiple alleles for that particular gene. So if we take a crude example and say eye color, you know, you might have one chromosome that gives you eye colour for blue and one chromosome that gives you eye colour for green. And then it's the combination of those two that gives you your final colour. But in the population, we know that there's brown eyes and hazel eyes and so on. So what we look at here is just a, a photo of our 23 chromosomes uh, ordered from biggest to smallest. And you can see that this is just one set. So this could be, say, from your mum. Chromosome 1, 2, 3, 4, and the special X chromosome. And now if we look at this diagram, we have now the full set of 46. So we have two chromosome 1s, we have two chromosome 2s, and so on. And I've just got a diagram here to sort of show that process. So we all have 46, but then we reduce that number down to 23 in our sex cells. So in the egg, women will reduce their 46 chromosomes and just choose one of chromosome one. It's not a, um, a choice that they make, it's a sort of a, a random process of which one of those chromosome ones goes in the egg, but it's the same, one of chromosome two, one of chromosome three, one of chromosome four, all the way down until we have 23 chromosomes in the egg and 23 chromosomes in the sperm. They fuse together to form a, an embryo, 
for a zygote, and that gives that baby its full set of chromosomes again. And obviously we can get a bit of variation, which we'll get to later on, about well, which one of these two chromosomes did the mum um, pass on to her egg, and then which one of these two chromosomes did the dad pass on. So there's lots of variations that can happen in the offspring. So I've got one question at the end here um, that hopefully can start having you think about something a little bit different is, okay, so these genes code for proteins, and all the proteins are just a sequence of amino acids. So if the DNA codes for the amino acid sequence, how many, um, we can't just have arginine code for one of the amino acids because we've got 20. So how many of those bases put together do we need to code for one amino acid? And it's mathematical, if that helps. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, find us on Facebook, Anytime Education. There's lots of other biological videos and um, some from my uh, colleague, Jeremy LeCornu. Uh, we've organized them on Anytime Education under different uh, categories. Check them out there and make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them. Thank you very much.